evidence. This year, you must return with evidence. Amen. Amen. You see, sometimes people will not believe in you, but once you have evidence of what you are doing, everybody will believe. Even the devil believes on somebody with results. When you have results, the enemy cannot say no. That your result is not here. That's why the whole world know about Jesus Christ. Even though they don't want to come to the knowledge of truth. Everyone that existed after Christ knows about him. He has evidence. What is your evidence today? I told you this morning about David. Even though he has killed a bear and a lion. But it was him that knew about it. So he has to explain himself. Every time you are explaining, you are losing. But the Bible says one day came when God wanted to show him fault. He doesn't have to do explanation again. There was an evidence of a dead, improper human being called Goliath lying down there. He has his head on his hand. Hallelujah. The Bible says when he came back, the women began to sing. Saul has killed thousands, but David has killed ten thousand. Hallelujah. Because he has evidence. This year will not end. There will be an evidence of your knowing God. Amen. There will be an evidence of your serving God. Amen. There will be an evidence of your Christianity. Amen. Your prayer life, there shall be evidence. It's not what you tell people I'm a Christian, they will see it. Amen. Many people that you have been inviting to church, that you will invite, they say, okay, next week I'll come. Next week they say, no. When the results start to show forth, and they say, sister, what is the secret? You say, well, that prayer I've been telling you, I've been going. They say, please, when are you going? Take me there. Take me there. People will say, I want to serve your God. Your God shall be your, my God. Your people shall become my people. Because you have evidence. But how do we generate that evidence? In the course of this program coming up on Friday, I told us on Friday, we are talking about vision. Right division. That's what the title of the program is. Right division. We are going to do Friday, Saturday. On Sunday, continue with ours. On Sunday, it's also our first food harvest. Hallelujah. So that Sunday, come with whatever the Lord has put in your heart this year as your first fruit. We have just begun the year. Come with it. And also, if you want us to see your board, because I, I, I've been telling about, write your vision this year. You don't have to write it. You can put pictures. You can come with your vision board that day. I'm going to bring the one for the church. We are going to see where we are going. Don't make one year vision. Make 10 years a decade. Amen. So that it can be attainable. So that it can be, because you have time to build it. You know, Whatever you can remember that because you will add to it before the end of this year. You will add to it next year. You will add to it next two years, next three years, next four years. By the time you get to ten years, maybe everything there is complete. You have a new vision. Because that's where you keep it. The Bible says, God said, write it down on the table and make it plain. But I'm going to show us how. This week we began to talk about the mysteries of the kingdom. Everything about the kingdom of God is a mystery. The Bible says, life is in the blood. That means when God breathed into Adam, the breath of life, <coughs> that means when God said, blood was put in the body of Adam. Amen. The breath of God was life. Because if life is in blood, and the Bible said God breathed into man the breath of life, and man became a living soul, that breath, what contaminated the blood of Adam was seen. His blood became contaminated. So we have to get another blood. To cleanse him. To cleanse everybody that came from him. That's why Jesus came. And gave us the blood. The pure blood. The blood that with, is without blemish. Matthew chapter 13. Let us pray. Father, the Bible says the entrance of your word. Bring it light and understanding to the simple. Your word is the lamp unto our feet. And the light unto our path. Let the word that we shall hear and speak now, not be an enticing word of a man, but let it be the word of God that we bring glory Hallelujah. to your holy name. Amen. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Look at Matthew chapter 13. I'm going to talk to us today about the four pillars. Four pillars of growth. Four pillars of success. Four, there are four pillars. Maybe I'm, I'm, I'm going to lose the four of them 
and talk about what? Then on Friday, we are going to continue when we talk about vision, how to build a vision, how to acquire a vision, how to receive a vision, how to pursue vision, how to achieve a vision. We talk about it Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. It's going to be about because this year, you can never miss anything. Amen. You can't. When I say miss, you will not miss nothing. When opportunities come, you are ready. Because many times, people get opportunity. They lose it because they are not prepared. There must be some preparation before there is success. If you are not prepared, success can be passing by you every day. Mm. And you will not be able to hold it because you don't have the capacity to carry the success that God is giving to you. Because everything life, about life is about your capacity. If your capacity is not enough for what you are asking for, you will never get it. You have to have the ability and the capacity to carry that which God is going to send your way. I want you not to pray amidst this year. So, if you need capacity to get to your destination, increase it. If that capacity needs knowledge, get knowledge. If it needs wisdom, get wisdom. If it needs skill, go get skill. If it needs whatever spiritual life, get it. If it needs prayer, because you have to build capacity in three ways. You build physical capacity, structure. Then spiritual capacity, your prayer life and your commitment and your relationship with God. Then you have to have a social network, which is another capacity. There are some things that your ability cannot reach. But if you are networking to one, two, three people in that same field, so you can now release yourself in three or four places. Hallelujah. So what you cannot do alone, four people can do it. And there will be more room. Hallelujah. Amen. So you have to have all this capacity. But look at Jesus Christ. Matthew 13. And verse 10. And they began to ask him questions. And the disciples came to him and said, Why do you speak to them in parables? Yes. Okay. Why? Jesus did not preach a direct message to the crowd because they will never understand him. He tell them stories and parables. And he said in verse 11, and he answered and said to them, Because it has been given to you. Those of you listening to me, those of you online, it has been given to you to know, hallelujah. It has given to you to know the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven. But to them, it has not been given. Hallelujah. It has been given unto us to understand, to unravel, to dissect, to analyze, to articulate the mysteries in the kingdom. That's why we will know that when we pray, God will hear and answer us. And some people will say, but how can God and who is God? Because it is not given to them to understand. That's why we believe that there is power in the blood of Jesus Christ. But to some people, they say, Jesus died long time. How can his blood be available? It's a mystery. There are mysteries in the kingdom. Jesus said, the mysteries are given to us, to us, the children of God, to understand, to know, but not to everybody out there. Hallelujah. So sometimes when people ask you some questions, don't waste your time because they are not going to be convinced. They will never understand. Some things are mysteries. Some things are, are kept secret. God has secret. The Bible says they that dwell in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. There's not everything for everybody to know. Even as much as you think you know God, you have not known Him. God is an all-knowing God. It's a mama, masi, a masi. Hallelujah. That is the tongue I'm speaking. It's a God that you can never understand His ways. The Bible says the ways of God are far from man. As the north is far from the south, so is the ways of God. As the heaven is far from the earth, so are the ways of God. So we're going to talk about how to begin to attract and get this thing. The four pillars. I told us number one is organization. Organization. That's all the preparation that you need. Number two. Perfectionism. To make sure your job, your skill, your access, whatever you are producing, what services you are bringing is imperfect. You must make sure it is almost 100%, or if not 100%. There is no room for failure. You know, you make one impression in life, and you can succeed or fail. There is no two ways. If there's a, there are some people that you see, you have only one minute for them to make impression. And if you say, let me do it over, you might never have opportunity to do it over again. So if you are not ready, and you don't have the professionalism, and the, 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 the language of the business or the skill or the trade or whatever you want to tell them you might not be able to get what you need to get from them. Not that you don't have the ability, but you don't know how to present yourself. 
Number three is diligence. That's where hard work comes. People think that once you are diligent, you have to make it. Let me tell you the most diligent people on earth are truck pushers, barrel pushers, plumbers, mechanics. They work so hard. They are there in the morning. It's winter now. It's very cold here. People are out there in the street. If you are driving on the highways, you see some people are standing on this cold. They are paving the road. They are, they are working construction. They are diligent. But diligence is just 25% of success in life. Mm. So if you only have diligence, you might not hit your back. You need to have the four pillars. And diligence is not the first thing you break in the business. You must have a business plan. You must have a business name. You must have a company. You must have some things that you have put as a structure, which is organization. Is the most important. Number one is organization. Two is perfectionism. Number three is diligence. Hard work. Coming there, opening the shop every day, going to your business, not leaving work, not calling off, not saying that I'm tired today, I'm not going anywhere. I'm sick. In fact, nobody's coming for the last three days. I've not gotten a customer. You keep going. Have you seen a man diligent in his business? He shall stand before great men, not men. And number four is prudence. You have to be a man that makes the right decision. Man that is decision making is articulated. Don't be in a rush to make a decision, but make the right one. Because one, one mistake in business can cost you money. And not only cost you money, it cost you time. And you lose viable customers, viable business partners, viable people that will help you, destiny helpers. There's a way you present yourself. You are destiny helper, we see you and leave. Even though God has sent them to help you. There are three people that help you in life. One is God. Hallelujah. Number two is the people that God has sent to you. Hallelujah. To call, they, call, they, they call them the, 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 the burden bearers. Burden bearers. They are destiny helpers. Number three is your network. Who are you in network with? If you have God, and you have a burden bearer. People that pay your burden. The Bible says Jesus was carrying a cross. And a man called Joseph and Matia came and said, let me help you carry the burden. Let me help you. You must have help. Nobody succeeds in life alone. Nobody. I said, what? Even God will not succeed alone. God has to create people to work with him first. The angels and everybody that was there, the Holy Spirit and Jesus Christ proceeded from God. He couldn't do it alone. Even up till now, God did man. As we need God, so is he needing us. He said, I sought for a man. Are you the one that he's looking for? God is still hiring people. Positioning people in places. He said, I sought for a man. I sought for a man. God is searching for men all over. Are you available? When he gives you responsibility, can you carry it? Organization. Amen. Amen. Let's go to Genesis chapter 1. This teaching today is going to be deep, but if you understand it, if you don't understand it, don't misunderstand me. Sometimes people will not understand you, but they will misunderstand you and they won't tell you. And now people are thinking something else Why you are saying something else, but they won't tell you. Habakkuk chapter 2 verse 2, say, write the vision down, make it plain. Look at God now. What God is not just a talker. He does what he says. Genesis chapter 1 verse 1, in the beginning God created the heavens and the earth, and the earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep, and the Spirit of God hovered upon the face of the waters, and God said, let there be light, and there was light, and God saw the light, that it was good, and God divided the light from darkness, God called the light day, and darkness he called night, so there was evening and there was morning the first day, now there was an earth that is half nothing, and if you read from down, God began to Ask the earth from a vessel level to bring forth, to bring forth. The Bible said, and God said, Let the earth bring forth grass, herbs, yield seed, and food that yield fruit according to its kind. We'll see it shall be on the earth. And it was so. And God was saying, Let grass come, let bear come. By this time, God was writing his vision. There was no grass, there was no bear. He has spoken them out, he has seen them. But he has put them in a bond. They existed. Even the man that was created in Genesis chapter 1, God created a man in the spirit. The man has not existed physically yet. I told you in the morning that everything happened twice. There's an anointed time and there's an appointed time. When God said those things, it was the anointed time. When God began to form man, it was the appointed time for man to be born. 
So God began to put things in it. After he created the heaven and earth, how do I know? I'm going to show you now. The Bible says God created everything after he had blessed man. Genesis chapter 2. Look at verse 5. We don't have time to run around because I'm going to, we're going to pray. He said, before the plant of the field was on earth. So by this time, it's assumed that they're supposed to have been. But there's no plant. The earth was still a big place. Before the plant of the field was on earth. Hallelujah. And before the head from the field grew, for the Lord had not caused it to rain on earth. Why? And there was no man. Because there was no man. God has created man in Genesis chapter 1. But there's no man to till the ground yet. God did not allow rain. God did not allow growth. So when you are not prepared, many of you will pray for growth. There will be no growth. You will pray for success. Success will not come until you have the capacity to carry success. So God himself could not allow rain to come, will not allow growth on earth, will not allow the, the vegetations and the fields and the plants to begin to grow because there is no man yet. And the Bible said, and God now caused rain. After the rain came that night, read down. When the rain came down, but the mix went up from verse 6 down to the earth and watered the whole face of the earth. So the earth is watered now. And the Lord God formed man from the dust of the ground and breathed into his nose the breath of life. A man became a living being. And the Lord planted. God began to plant now. Those things that he has called, the, 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 the herbs, the trees, everything, God began to plant them. Now man is on the other side. There's a way I analyzed it last time. I, I was talking to us in Bible studies. Man was at the finishing end of the production line. If you have been in production line, man is at the tail end. Man is on the quality assurance. He is the one that tests everything to make sure that they are what God said they are. So when God is forming the trees and the, they will roll it over and man will say this is a mango it becomes a mango. God will form another tree. Man will look at this and fig tree. So man now was at the end of production and after God finished the Bible said there is still nothing good for man. Hallelujah. So man has not found a bed for himself. And God began to form the woman. But before then, God brought the plants. So, the, the animals. After the God created the plant, God created the animals. They came also. And Adam began to name all of them. So, Adam was part of the creation. He was there. And God and the Holy Spirit and the angels are here. As they are forming those things. Adam was naming them. But after Adam named everything, Adam still did not have a match for him. Hallelujah. Amen. And God says it's not good. Verse 18, God says it's not good for the man to be alone. I will make for him a helper comparable to him. Out of the ground, the Lord formed every beast of the field and the birds of the air and brought them to Adam to see what he would call them. And whatever Adam called it, every living creature, that was his name. So Adam gave them to the cattle and the birds of the air and every beast of the field. But for Adam, there was not found a helper comparable to him. And the Lord caused a deep sleep to fall upon the man. Adam now slept and God took a rib out of him and closed the flesh. That was the first surgery. Then the rib which God has taken from the man, he made the woman and brought her to Adam also. And Adam looked at her in verse 23. Adam said, now this is the bone of my bone and the flesh of my flesh. She shall be called woman because she was taken out of the man. How did Adam know? Even though he was sleeping in the flesh, his spirit was alive. He, he was asleep, but his spirit knew that God took a rib out of him. And God had formed something because he had seen everything, but he had not seen a woman. And the woman walked up from the production line also. She was coming with two legs. Adam said, wow, this is me. This is taken from me. And there was a wedding. And that's how they lived. Even God, that called things that be not as even though they are. The day he called them is not the day they appear. The day they call them is not the day they appear. There is a time that is in between. The Bible says, as long as the earth remains, seed time and harvest shall not cease. There is a seed time. And in between the seed and the harvest, there is a time frame. It can be one day, it can be one hour, it can be two minutes, it can be ten years. But there is a time in between. The seed and the harvest. Because the seed has to die to produce the harvest. Hallelujah. So this thing you must begin to do organization. 
which is the first thing in the pillar of success. You organize yourself, get ready for success. You prepare for success. Preparation is what leads to success. Many things you are asking for, some time, you don't have the capacity to carry it. If you read the book of Matthew 25, the Bible was talking about these three group of men that came. One looked at one group and gave them five talents. He gave another group two, and the other group he gave one. And he said to everyone according to their several ability. Many times you are asking God, I need ten things. God said, you have the capacity of one. I'm just going to give you one. Just manage one. And you keep saying, God, I've been with one thing for a while. And God is looking at you complaining for one. Say, but the one is not well kept. God, I need a three-bedroom house. And God said, in that one room, just manage it. Because in that one room, it's all upside down. The one room is okay. You are not even living as somebody that has a house. You live like somebody that lives in the street. And God said, you can't even manage one room. How can I give you three? But you are praying, you are sowing seed, you are fasting. All these things are good. But while you are doing that, make sure you are organized. That's why I tell you, man, when you, get, when you get married, make sure you have a roof over your head. Which is your roof. You have a bed. You have two spoons, two plates. You have a stove. Those things show that you are ready for the second person. You don't need to have one plate and you are looking for a, a woman and say, I want to marry you. You, don't, you have only one plate. Are you going to eat in the same plate? You must have two plates. Two spoons. Preparation. You get ready. You want to buy a car? Get the driver's license. I've seen people that buy a car before they have a license. So their car is back. And every time they say, no, what about the car? You are not driving the car. I say, you know, I've not gotten for my driver's license this year. You went ahead of time. There are first things that come first. I was telling us about opportunity. If somebody come here and say, I need somebody to drive me down to um, Anderson, South Carolina, which is about two hours from here. And uh, I, I, I'm going to pay them 100000 That's an opportunity. A lot of people will jump into it. But if you don't have a license, it's a cost for you. Because you can just live here. In the next five minutes, you are in jail. You'll be sending somebody to go and bail you out. Even though it's an opportunity. Yeah. Are you talking? You, you, you see it's about capacity. You are of age. You're supposed to have a license. Or maybe you have one that is expired. Or your license has been cancelled. And you say, okay, because 100,000 is a big money. I need to drive this man without the license. You are breaking the law. And you are not have the capacity to do that. You can end up in jail even though you are trying to catch money. You see how things happen in life. It's not every opportunity that is yours. Some opportunity you look at and say, I'm going to pass on this because I'm not ready. Hallelujah. Because you don't have the ability to sustain whatever is given to you. But if you say, let every, everything come, let me just grab all of them. You will lose it the way they came. When Adam was not ready to handle the wife, he lost his paradise. God gave him a child. Simple instruction, don't touch this food. Adam was successful in everything. He did business good. But he broke that one law. There was no way. Let me tell you some customers, some business people, some members that will come, you will lose them in a minute. Not because you are what you don't have the direct word from God, but you don't have the capacity to carry them. You have to be prepared. So while you are praying, ask God, this thing I'm asking, am I ready for it? Are you ready? Hallelujah. Are you sure you are ready? Organization is everything. If you are not organized, they are telling you that some things in life will never happen for you. It's not a cause. I'm telling you, it's a promise. You have to get ready for success. Success, you prepare for success. You anticipate success. You must be ready for success. You project success. You, 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 are, you, you be sure that it will happen. The mystery there is that you don't know how it will happen. But if everything is in place, get ready. Get ready for harvest. I'm going to give, give us this. We are just still talking about organization. Before you start to jump out first, do the necessary, the necessary things. Let all the necessaries be there in place. Check them. That's why you have to recheck your work. You do something, you check it again. You go back and check it again. You go back and check it again. Not that you are a fool, but sometimes in your own eyes, you are right. Let somebody else look at it. People hire people to think for them. In this country, do you know that CEOs are paid to think? For you to be a CEO in America, you have to be someone that understands emotional intelligence. Not just having an IQ, but you must have emotional intelligence that you don't move under pressure. You can handle quarreling in business, you can handle market down, losses, and still be talking tough. And what you are paid for is to think. 
If that is a sale, you are gone. They are not paying for the running around of reason. People are in the place. They are janitorial workers. They are people in the field. They are drivers. They are all the people that do the handy work. Your job is to take. Come with innovations, things that we create. So you begin to pay people to think for you. CEOs who hire advisors, presidents, uh, 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 become presidents. I think you don't really do anything. Think about the best thing for your country. It's not that some president don't understand your job is to think for the betterment of the people, not you. You have nothing to do with it. If you run it very well for the first four years, they will bring you back. After eight years, you can make all the money in the world. If you are a former president to give a speech, any American former president is 500,000. Just for them, if they don't have to appear in this church for anyhow, we have to pay them. Why don't they just come and shake people's hands? Anywhere you see a president appear, they are paid, unless they are doing it for foundation to help a cause. But if you, the, the company is bringing them in their convention for anyhow, you are, they are paid. The money has gone into their account ahead of time. Because sitting in that office for four years or eight years, you have seen everything. Hallelujah. Amen. So begin to think. Like a CEO, now many of you will begin to look for somebody that will work as your assistant. If you don't have money, call people to work as volunteers. Say, there's a job I have for you, but you see, we don't pay people now, but we are going to give you recommendations that you have worked here as an experience in this field. So I will be telling you what I do, and you learn what I do also, but I want you to be my assistant. A lot of movies you see in America, many people work in movies, they have done 5, 10, 20 movies, they have not been paid once. They use their transport, come, put themselves in a hotel, just to be on the screen. What they give you is credit. They put your name that you were part of this movie. And your name is spelled in. So now, next movie you are going for, you say, I have auditioned for this movie. I got the role. I acted it. They don't ask you how much you were being paid. As long as you did it, they don't watch it and say, Wow, she's good. It's good. They hire you. Now you have experience. So begin to think like a CEO. Organization is what will make you not to fall. Let me tell you some, some establishment you are looking at today. What is keeping them is organization. They are not out there getting new people coming in, but they get people by referrals. People have been with them 50 years, 20 years. They will refer their children, their children, children, their children, 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 their family members. That's how their book of business continues to increase. Ministry, deceptive. Life is that way. Your name is what keeps you. It's your organization that brings that thing. Longevity. Let's read 2 Kings chapter 3, and we are going to pray. On Friday, I'm going to talk about the rest of three pillars. But if you understand organization, you are almost 50% ready. How to get organized? Because this year, you can't miss opportunities. There is no opportunity that comes your way that we just go by. Because you are ready. Information is what brings transformation. Amen. If you are not informed in life, you will be deformed. Mm. It's information. That's what changes everything. The devil did not know what God told Adam. He was itching his ear everywhere. He hit his ears on the ground. He came to the woman and said, Did God say you should not eat of the fruit? He didn't know. He was looking for information. Information is what changed the equation. Amen. When it came out that information, that's how they lost that place. So be careful. Second Kings chapter 3. Look at these three kings. I'm just going to tell us the story. I'm just trying to run through it because of our time. But you see, it's an interesting story. These are three kings that you're supposed to know that they're supposed to know. You know, there are people that when you see them make mistakes, you say, what is wrong? This person, for them to be in this position, they're supposed to know better than everybody. These are the king of Judah, the king of Israel, and the king of Edom. The three kings, they were going to war, but they went into the long route and they run around for seven days and all their water dried up. And you know, without water, you can't even sustain yourself. So they don't have water to drink. They don't have water for their donkeys and their cattle because they have to eat. These are kings. They kill cows as they go. Goat that they are traveling with. They have water for their for, for, for their animals that carry them. They have water for their soldiers. So now they, they couldn't find water and they are in the wilderness. Going back home is going to be disastrous. They might not make it back. They are already far away in the wilderness. So they began to say, what shall we do? And one of them said, well, let's go. Josephus say, let's go and look for a man of God. That we can inquire of the Lord whether we are making mistakes. How did we get ourselves entangled here? And the Bible said that somebody, one of the servants of the king of Israel, said that Elisha is here. And <coughs> Joseph has said, Yes, the word of the Lord is upon him. Let's go into Second Kings. Are we there? Yes. 
verse 9. It says, So the king of Israel went to the king of Judah and the king of Edom, and they marched on that ran about for seven days, and there was no water for their army, nor for their animals that followed them. And the king of Israel said, Ah, for the Lord has called these three kings together to deliver them into the hand of the mob. They are trying to fight the Moabites. So these three kings became common friends. They were enemies all together. But verse 11, what Joseph has said, Is there no prophet of the Lord here? That we may inquire of the Lord by him. So one of the servants of the king of Israel answered and said, Elisha, the son of Shepherd, is here. Who poured water in the hand of Elijah? And Joseph and the king of Judah now said, Ah, the word of the Lord is with him. So the king of Israel and Joseph and the king of Edom went to him. Then Elisha said to the king of Israel, What have I to do with you? Go to the prophets of your father and the prophets of your mother. The king of Israel was the son of Jezebel. So Jezebel was a tribal king. The queen, she killed prophets, killed, maimed them. So now this boy is in front of and the prophet, prophet said, what, what do I have to do with you? Go back to the bad prophet that your mother had. But because Joseph, the king of Judah, one of the sons of David, was there. He said, he looked at him, he said, but the king of Israel said to him, no, for the Lord had called these three kings together to deliver them into the hand of the mob. And Elijah said, as the Lord of hosts lives, before whom I stand, surely were it not that I regard the presence of Joseph, the king of Judah, I would not look at you, nor see you. But now bring me musicians. And it happened when the musician played that the hand of the Lord came upon him. And this, he said, Thus says the Lord, make this valley full of ditches. For thus says the Lord, you shall not see wind, nor shall you see rain. Yet the valley shall be filled with water, so that your cattle and your animals may drink. And this is simple matter in the sight of the Lord. Let's pause there. They came. God give us water. We are dying. These people were tired already. Many, many times of time, we get to God when we are at the last drop. We don't have any other hope. We don't have any other thing. Our strength is exhausted. Like the woman that came to Jesus, she has spent, when she was a millionaire, she never showed up in church. She was busy calling specialist doctor, flying to Dubai, going to the best places, India, for surgery. She went everywhere. When the money was finished, now she remembered, oh, let's go to God. Let's go to that pastor. And the Bible says, she, when she spent all her money, she showed up. Now she was poor. She didn't even have the money to, to give access to meet Jesus Christ. But she said, if I can talk to him of this man's coming, I shall be made home. She got it because she believed. But these kings, now, they don't have anywhere to go. But look at what God did. God, God didn't care how many days they have been walking without water. He said, make the valley full of ditches. Go back to work. Go and dig ditch. Because we are standing in the presence of the prophet. So we need water. What will God do? Send down rain? If rain comes, will they carry it in their hand? They will drink and, and, be, and be thirsty again the next day. The container they have was not enough because if it was enough, for that seven days they will still have water. So the, 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 the best way is for them to go and dig what? Ditches. He said, make this valley full of ditches. But when the miracle will come, he said, for you shall not see wind nor rain, yet the valley shall be filled with water. If you have put all the necessary things in place, then the miracle of God will happen that you will not go the normal route. Businesses will begin to spring up because you have the capacity. They didn't have capacity. They were coming, say, God, give us water. Give us hunger and the law of Christians and banging on the door of heaven and praying day and night, fasting day and night. God said, come on, go and make ditches. I have given you everything. Go make the value. Go start a business. Go get a job. Don't waste your time. I have released the presses, but you must do this. God would have done ditch for them. God said, I'm not doing it. Go dig ditches. Even though they were tired, they God said, go back to work. So what do they do? They have to go with their servant began to dig ditch in the whole of that wilderness. I don't know how many did they dug. And the Bible said, after they finished that night, I want you to say something. Masakatayaba. Preparation is what leads to success. Amen. You will succeed this year, but you must be prepared. Ah, organization will change the status quo for you. Amen. Look at what happened here. After they have done the ditch, verse 22, then they rose up early in the morning and the sun was shining on the water. 
And the moment I saw the waters on the other side of the rain, of the, as great blood, and they say, there is blood. Now I want to see where it's talked about the valley. The whole place has filled up. God used that to destroy their enemies. But I want to show you how the water came up. Where did we stop before? Seventeen. But also the Lord shall not see with no water, but the rage of him. No, eighteen. And sample, look, let's go to that. Also, you shall attack every fortified city. God told them what to do. And every spring water and rain. Now it happened. Look at the first 20. I want you to see it. Now it happened in the morning when the great offering was offered. That suddenly. I want you to say suddenly. Suddenly. That is what you will see that happened to you today. Suddenly. The Bible said in the morning that suddenly something began to. Water came by the way of Edom. And the land was filled with water. water. This is water they have looked for seven days. They have searched the whole of that wilderness. They have not seen water. But the moment they obeyed God and taught teaches, in the morning, the whole place was littered. God began, what the, 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 the prophet said it clearly. He said, you shall not see wind. So they were expecting rain to fall. There was no rain. The moment they taught that teach, water began to come up. By the time they woke up in the morning, the miracle, most of you are, most of you are awake to a miracle. Adam was too awake to see Eve. God said, you are not seeing her. And you are not going to see the process. I need you to sleep. Some of you have prayed, you have fasted, you have done everything. Sleep on your miracle. The Bible said they went to bed and woke up in the morning. The whole place was filled with water. Receive suddenly miracle. Amen. I said suddenly, suddenly, Amen. something began to happen. You shall not see wind this year, nor shall you see rain. That means the miracle will not come the conventional way. It will not come the way that everybody knows. But as long as there is capacity to carry what you are asking God, God will release the blessings. I say receive your blessings. Amen. But you must be prepared. Receive your harvest. You must be prepared. Receive your miracle. You must be prepared. Because preparation is what creates miracle. Amen. Organization. I preached this message one day in Maryland. And one guy came to me and told me how he has wrote a good business plan. Went everywhere. If he tried to get a loan, nobody listened to him. He went to school, he had a master's degree, MBA in business. Very smart guy. He said, after you finish ministering, I discovered what I did not do. I said, what is that? He said, I did not register my business and I don't have a business account. I said, yes, nobody will tell you. When you finish, they read their proposal. He said, everybody will say, well, that is good, this and that. They will shake his hand. They said, but we are not, we are not investing this time. Even when he went for loan, he tried to put out his car and all that. I said, go register a business. Now, you take that business and go register a business account. If you are talking about business of hundreds of thousands, I'm talking about millions. Nobody is going to send you money in your personal account. It will not be done. IRS will shut you down. The moment that money hits your account, the government will close that account. By the time you finish explaining, after 60 days or 160 days or, or six months, that money will never come back. It will go from one litigation lawyer to another lawyer. You will lose everything. And probably you might go to jail. They will charge you for money laundering. Go have a business account. And he said he didn't do it. He thanked me. He said, do you know it took more than 10 years? He was working at QT as a, as a cashier. This is somebody who me from a renowned university in this country. But frustration. Say, I'm not going to pick a white collar job. I'm tired of doing what I just want anything that can pay my bills until I get my dream. And but his eyes was scared. It's like something fall off his eyes that day. You have to have capacity. How does it come through organization? You are going to say, God, send me people, send me people. You are not there talking with the body. You are not even having any kind of association. The Bible says he that walk with white shall be what? White. A companion of fools shall be destroyed. You don't have any wise man around you. You don't associate with yourself with them. Let me tell you, there are some mistakes that you don't have to make in life. Since somebody has made that mistake and succeeded, why not go to them to mentor you? You are praying to God. God will connect you to men that have gone through the route you want to go through. So 10 years of their, fa their failure will be some months for you. You will not have to go through the same. Don't do this, don't do this. I did this, I did this. It didn't work. Just do this. And be someone that is teachable. Because a lot of people do know. They know everything. Then you cannot learn from anybody. 
Be an open-minded person. Even if you think you know what somebody is telling you, listen to them first. Don't begin to argue foolishly. If somebody has a result, they have proven that what they are telling you is real. They have the result you are looking for. And now you are not listening to them. You don't have the result. Who is a fool? Somebody have a result of what you want. And you are going to them arguing. Find out how did they get that result. Even the devil will do that. When you have results in life, there's an evidence of what you are saying. Everybody wants to get it. Pride will be disappearing. You see people that are so proud to talk to you. But they see you with evidence. They come back and say, don't, 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 don't because I don't want to talk to you. You know, we have been friends and they will tell you stories how you went to school together. You know they don't like you. You don't like them. But there's a mutual understanding. There's something I have that you need. So now, what are you going to pay for it? That's when you see Americans say, what do you want to do? What are you going to do? They say, this is interesting. If I'm going to do this for you, you have to do this. Don't close your mind and say this by the enemy. I will not. That person that is even low, there's something you can still get from them. Organization. This year, you have to have networks of people around you. Like minds, people that are in the same establishment, business with you. We are going to pray now. Oh, Carabas, don't miss that program Friday, Saturday. Bring your friends and family. This year, you will not lose anything. You will not make 10 years' mistake this year. You will be fast forwarded in life. There are some things that you hear, there are some nuggets, there are some secrets that you get. It will take away time from you. Many times we talk about time. Because we have not been supernaturally endowed. You have not been empowered supernaturally. If God did not show up in the life of these kids, they will run around there. Probably they will die in that wilderness. Never come out. Because now they don't have money. They don't have water. They don't have anything. They are tired. But the days of wastage ended in just one day. Because of instruction. And they heeded to the instruction. Don't make it a dangerous mistake. Many of us, where we are today, is as a result of our decisions last year. Don't repeat it today. Because if you repeat it, you get the same result. You have to change. Hallelujah. Let us pray. I want you to begin to thank God. Begin to thank God, whatever you are. Begin to thank God because something is about to hit you now. You will be organized. You see, organization start with you. You don't have to be organized with somebody. Start with yourself. Organize yourself. Get up in the morning and plan your day. Don't just jump out of your bed and run out. Take time to say, meditate on yourself. What am I doing today? After you have spoken to God, begin to plan your day. If you are somebody like right like me, begin to write things down, little, little things. I write everywhere. I jot down things. Because when you write things down, you don't forget them. The, the shortest pencil is longer than the longest memory. If you don't get anything, get it this one today. The shortest pencil is longer than the longest memory. I don't care how big your memory is. The devil will make you forget and one day you say, ah, I forgot this thing. But if you wrote it down, it's there looking at you. You are looking at it. And keep it where you are going to see. If you go to my desk in my bedroom, there's a lot of small more things. Sometimes my kids will come there and mess this around. But I will tell them one day not to. They still go and mess it up. Those things, I know what they mean. So if you look at it sometimes, you don't understand what it is. I wrote here a little bit. I wrote here a little bit. These things, when I look at it, I know exactly what I wrote. Because I wrote it. It reminds me of something. It keeps me that my story. Some people like to carry each other. Some people write in their phone. I'm not a good person like text. Some people, when you are talking to them, they back back back, they have text point one, point two, point three. They send it. It's on their phone. They send it to their email. They go back and read it. Make sure you are organized by yourself. Then, if you are in partnership with somebody, in marriage, in business, begin to organize your partner. You must bring them along because it won't work. You can't be the only one that is organized. You have to bring another person. Say, let's be organized this year. Let's be organized this year. We have to do it right. If you do it right, God will help you. Let us pray. Ask God to help you to be organized. Amen. Let God help you today. Ah, that right division. Let, let God help you. You can't just walk alone. This year you are working with somebody by the authority and the power. In the name of Jesus, Mazoko to Yobo, Lepakashata Karama, Nikaraba Sotorobo, Makaraba Sita Tatatata, Leprakashata Rababa, Makaraba Sotorobo, the Kenya Mamma, Makaraba Sotoro, Leprakashata Tatata, Nikaraba Sotoro. Help us to organize in this ministry. Help us to organize in my life, in the personal life, me and my wife, our pastors, our leaders, everybody.
anybody that works in this establishment. Help us in organization. I will concern in the name of Jesus. Masiko to your boy, you mama mama. Our international international team, Lord, begin to organize the members of the strategic leaders. In the name of Jesus, Makereba, Bakorobo, Sokoro, Momomo, Beka, ta 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 ta. In the name of Jesus, help us. I pray in your name, O Lord God Almighty. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. I want you to pray this prayer. Ask God for wisdom. But I wisdom is profitable to direction. Once you are a wise person, the information you get will not just go out of the blue. Ask God for wisdom, for favor, and for the anointing. Anointing breaks every yoke. Once the anointing of God is upon your life, things you have speed. Let me tell you, speed comes from God. The Bible says, success does not, riches does not come from the east or from the west, but from above. David said, I will look up to the hill. Where shall my help come from? My help shall come from the Lord. Who made the heaven and the earth? Speed. God will give you favor. He will grant you speed. Those are graces, different graces. Ask God for wisdom. Ask God for wisdom. This year, you will not make a 10 years mistake. Every mistake of the past, Lord, let it end. Forgive us in any way we have not been able to stand. Some of us, our mistakes is that we don't consult God. We come to God when we have failed. Today, we start to put God first. You shall be the first to hear that proposal. You shall be the first to talk to us, to talk to us on what to do. Before we even connect our pastor, before we connect ourselves, Lord, may we talk to you first. Help us to be wise. Help us to walk with the right people, the right people. The Bible says, He that walketh to be wise, walketh with the wise, shall be wise. But the companion of fools shall be destroyed. Lord, and Akaraba, so come on, she came in, Mama, Mama, Masiko to your boy, he came Baba, Libra, Kashito, Momo, Masaka, Dagaba, he came in, Mama, Shakara, Baba, in the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus, we are going to pray for favor. Favor is God helping you to do what you, you, you could have done, but it will take time. When favor is upon you, level God. Let me tell you, when you see a man that carries favor, every level will be broken. Amen. When men struggle, you will not struggle there. Amen. Because favor is what increases your life. Favor is seated upon grace. When grace is upon you, it comes with favor. It carries you. Doors are opening on their own. You show up in a place. People are smiling and you say, what is wrong with them? Are they crazy or what? They are looking at you. They are seeing light. They are glowing. They don't even know why. People are blessing you, helping you. Today, your destiny helper shall begin to show. When you carry favor, every helper will be positioned. Yes. They will be where they're supposed to be. Hallelujah. By the authority and the power. Everyone that is connected to your destiny, wherever they are, may they begin to show up because favor is locating your house, locating your ministry, your business. Today, favor carries favor. Every man that carries favor destroys labor. Every labor in your life, I pray for them. We stand on the power and the authority of God. Is by the grace of God, by the name of Jesus Christ. Let favor begin to work for you. Let favor begin to carry you. Let favor begin to open door. Let favor begin to do everything for you. In the name of Jesus Christ. The growth that you set upon my life. Organization is everything. If you don't have organization, don't start. Because confusion will come in your life and you begin to fail from the beginning. I want us to pray now for anointing. The Bible says the anointing destroys you. Anointing. When it comes upon you, men shall suffer for you. Amen. You will not be telling people, say this by business card. You will kill somebody and you say, please, sir, can I get your card? I want to connect with you. Because it's anointing. There's an aura in your life. Amen. There's an aura. When David left the house of Saul, Saul wanted to kill David. David ran for his life. But this is a man that is anointed, anointed, precious. He was hiding in the cave of Adullam. By the next morning, 400 men show up. Ah! Then they say, what are you doing here? They say, we don't have anywhere to go but you. They say, but I don't have money. I don't have food to feed you. They say, don't worry. We're going to manage with you. Those vain men, the Bible says, vain men followed David, 400 men. Those vain men became the mighty man of David. These are men that were trained at the, at the jobs of life. They began to become strong. They began to become great. Today, Karabasiko, carry the anointing. The Bible says, and Jesus walked much to follow him. There was an anointing of attraction upon his life. Even demons will come. People that don't like him, they will still come. You have the result. You have the evidence. Let the anointing begin to come. The prayer supreme.
life shall not be vain. After you are organized, you need an anointing. You need an anointing for your life. You need an anointing to change the equation, to change the status quo. You need an anointing that will begin to turn the heart of men around. For the youth have been destroyed by the anointing, by the power and the authority in the name of Jesus. The blood of Jesus will begin to flow for you, begin to speak for you. The blood of the Bible says, speak it better things than the blood of Abraham. That blood will begin to speak finances. Speak prosperity, the blood will speak love. The blood shall speak prosperity, it shall speak advancement. That blood will speak success. The blood shall speak freedom. I say, receive it. Anointing will begin to destroy every yoke of additional power. Ancestral deity, familiar spirit, every frontline causes. The anointing destroys it. The anointing of Jesus Christ, the anointing in the name of Jesus, the power in the Holy Ghost. Concerning our life in the name of Jesus. It's not by power nor by might, but by the Spirit. Amen. Matthew chapter 13, after verse 25. That same place we read. The Bible says, White men were yet asleep. White men, you are not sleeping this year. Ah. I'm talking about not that you will sleep. You will sleep and wake up when your body is tired. But you are spirit man. The Bible says, God neither sleep nor slumber. Have you read it in your Bible? He that watcheth over Israel. Neither sleep nor slumber. Matthew 13, verse 25. Look at what the Bible says here. Jesus was talking to them. Oh, Laba, anything that the enemy has done in your life shall be destroyed today. Amen. It shall be canceled. Jesus. It shall be canceled. Amen. He said, But white men slept. The enemy came and sowed tars among the weeds and went his way. But when the grain had sprung and produced crops, then also appeared. So the servant of the owner came and said to him, Sir, did we not sow good seed in this field? How then does it have tires? And the man said in verse 28, and he said to them, An enemy has done this. An enemy has done this. Some of you, the errors in your life, the enemy has distracted you so long. Today, no more sleeping. Amen. Every Thing that the devil has cost you while you slept. I'm talking about why your eyes were out the ball, why you forgot your responsibility, why you didn't pray, why you never sowed your seed or paid your tithe, why you never showed up in church. Why men were sleeping? It's not that they were physically sleeping. Sleep is good, it's part of life. But the Bible says, Why men slept? God neither sleep nor slumber. God is a God that watches over everything. He looks through and through. Everything that the devil has sown in your life, sown in your ministry. So in your business, so in my life, so in this place, as we slept today, let God begin to destroy it. We begin to remove them. We begin to gather. The Bible says there is no weapon that is fashioned against us that shall prosper. And every tongue that will rise up against us in judgment, we condemn. We begin to condemn every backbiting and gossip tongue, every tongue of slander, every tongue of the enemy. Wherever they are gathered, the Bible says, surely they shall gather, but not by God, they shall fall for our sake. For whosoever shall gather, you shall fall for your sake. We begin to break every yoke and covenant, every every seed of discord, every seed of distraction, every seed of sin, every seed that the enemy has sown in my life, in your life. Today we bring them down by the authority and the power in the name of Jesus. When they were yet asleep from today, Allah, my spirit man get a lot. Be awake, don't sleep. Don't sleep. Even while I rest, don't sleep. I'm not sleeping. In the name of Jesus. When they slept, the enemy came and so that Every enemy around me, enemy in me, enemy within me, enemy above me, enemy under me, we begin to bring you down and tear you down. The Bible says, casting down imagination and every heart thing that exalts itself above the knowledge of Christ. For the weapons of our warfare, they are not coming. They are mighty through God to the pulling down of struggles. We begin to pull down negative thoughts. We begin to pull down actions and characters. We begin to pull down sins and the karamasiko infirmities. We come and Yes, every ancestral power, familiar spirit, every yoke and causes, we break you, every error, 
in my life in your life in this ministry Lord correct it today by the ocean of the power we stand on this altar we begin to correct errors 10 years errors 100 years errors 50 years errors errors of decades that the enemy has brought the Bible said the enemy has done this today every enemy in my life I root you out by fire by force let the fire of the Holy Ghost begin to break and destroy in the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. No stone shall be left unturned this year. Amen. Every fear city, we shall bring them down. Amen. Altars that have spoken before, while we were sleeping, we didn't know. They have spoken against us. Today, I want you to pray this last prayer. David prayed this at one to one. He said, The sun shall neither smite me by day. Yeah, 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 yeah. Night. Amen. Take over time. When you control the sun and the moon, you are above time. God is above time. We're supposed to be above time. That's why you can fast forward things or back forward it. When God met Moses in 14 days, Moses saw how God created the heaven and earth. He was writing it down. Just sitting down in the presence of God. God took him backward from Genesis. How he created it. Moses wrote Genesis. He was not born there. He wrote Exodus. He wrote Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy. The five book of Moses. He wrote things that happened when his father and his grandfather was not born. When nobody has existed on earth, he saw it. Mm. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. In Revelation, the Bible said, John was stuck at back, but God began to show him the end of the world. So you are above time and season. Today the sun shall not smite me by day, nor the moon by night. Everything that is programmed in these two powers, we begin to destroy it. Anything carrying my name negative, carrying your name, carrying the name of your family, my ministry. Today, when they bring it to the sun, the sun rejects it. When it goes through the day, the moon will say, not by watch. Anything that is bringing up, that is under time, I am above time. I stand in the aura of God, far above principalities and powers. Today you are going to go. The sun shall not smite me by day, nor the moon by night. The sun shall not smite my business by day, nor the moon by night. Anything that is under the sun cannot come against me. Because I have prison, I have power over the sun and the moon. I have power over the galaxies. I have power over principalities and powers. I have power over truth and dominion. So the Bible said, for the weapons of our warfare, they are not carnal, they are mighty to God. To the pulling down, pulling down of strongholds. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against rulers of darknesses and wickedness in highest places. Having done all to stand, we are standing, praying and bringing and tearing down, and uprooting and tearing, and burning and destroying every high place, every low place of the enemy, every creek valley, every water. We take authority over the airways, the byways, the freeways, the corner street. We take authority. The sun shall not smite you by day, nor the moon by night. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Begin to thank God. Father, we bless you. We worship you. We give you all the glory. We worship you. Have your way, Lord. We are blessed. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Thank you, Father. And we are thank you for who you are. Thank you for who you are. Thank you for who you are. We are free in the name Lord, of Lord, Jesus Christ. Because of all, you in the name of Jesus Christ. Put the hand together for Jesus Christ. Ah, it is done. It is done. It is done. 